minutes uh, of the previous meeting in front of you. Are there any comments or corrections? Seeing none, uh, do I hear an acceptance? No, uh, second. Chairman, I'll second the motion. And uh, motion's been made and seconded uh, for the acceptance of the previous meeting's minutes. Uh, all those in favor, show by raising your right hand. Minutes are approved. The uh, first order of business uh, this evening is the request by Joseph Prestacci for major subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the 19 lot Blueberry Ridge subdivision located off Mitchell Road, section 16-2-4, major subdivision review, and section 19-8-3, resource protection permit request to be tabled to the April meeting. Is there any discussion on that? Um, there is a motion. I'd just like to make a correction that the draft motion should state the April 22nd meeting, not April 16th. Okay. I'd like to offer a motion. Go right ahead, sir. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and facts presented, the application of Joseph Fristacci for major subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the 19 lot Blueberry Ridge subdivision located off Mitchell Road be tabled to the regular April 22, 2002 meeting of the planning board. Motion's been made. Is there any discussion? I should say, it's a, is there a second? Motion's made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll raise it to vote. All those in favor of the motion, please show by raising right hand. The motion carries unanimously. Second item on our agenda this evening is the uh, Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a site plan review to convert the building at uh, 343 Ocean House Road to a community center. An existing structure including office space on the first floor and a dwelling unit on the second floor is also located on the site. The plan was deemed complete at the February meeting and a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-6-4 town center zoning district design requirements. Uh, would you like to bring us up to date first on this? Good evening, Patty Flynn from SMRT. And we have addressed the issues and concerns which were brought up at the last meeting uh, about the Cape Elizabeth Community Center. And this has been outlined in a letter that you received along with the, pack, the packet of drawings showing the revisions that have been made. And you've also received a summary of compliance uh, uh, with site plan standards from Maureen O'Mara. And I will be very happy to elaborate on any of this information if you would like. But I'll start by giving a brief summary of the changes that have been made since last time. Um, you may recall uh, the, on the, with the architectural plan, last, last time you, uh, we presented these drawings, we were showing two exterior stairways, one uh, on the front towards the north end of the building and one at, on the rear at the north corner of the building. And these have been eliminated since then for reasons of safety um, and also because we felt that an interior stairway would be more useful in the long run to the to the building to the community center so that this has made some my, we've made some minor revisions in connecting you know relo reworking the building entries a little bit and connecting them to the existing walkway system and egress door has been added at 
again on the north side at the other end of the building and that's that's been connected into the walkway system that we showed last time uh, we we I'll put up the site plan we found it necessary to relocate a little bit to the north this um, dry, exit driveway and the reason for that was because there are there is a utility pole here which could be moved but there are also a couple of Verizon risers there which would be very expensive to move so so we moved this drive probably about about 20 feet in this direction we kept it um, as narrow as we could and as far down as we could so that we could still maintain this area for a future playground and um, we we have dressed the changes that were asked for um, to do with the esplanade in the front to bring that more into compliance with the town center standards for the esplanade with the required plantings and the, the walkway up to the existing building with plantings on either side. I'd like to add one of the comments that, uh, that we received was that, uh, that, they, that we were showing shrubs on only one side of this uh, walkway up to the main house and could we show the shrubs on, have the shrubs on both sides to accentuate um, that, that uh, walkway more. Um, that was an error on our part. Um, we, we did show the shrubs, but we did not, we had neglected to put in a leader on our planting plan that pointed to both sides of the walk, so we appreciate you um, drawing our attention to that, and that will be corrected on the plans. Another point was brought up about some plantings adjacent to the main entry, and the question was raised, uh, um, or a suggestion was made that perhaps we could instead of having um, shrubs in that area perhaps we could just have a tree with some grass planted there and I wanted to um, tell you a, a little bit about our reasoning in designing it the way that we did which was to encourage people to use to use the walkway de the designated walkways um, we felt that if this was just a grass area, people would tend to be cutting across there all the time, coming from the parking area or coming from, from the walkway um, to get to the entrance, and we felt that eventually it would become just a, a hard-packed dirt path. And, um, but we would be very happy to, if, if you would like to see grass there or some other treatment of that area, we'd be very happy to do that. I just wanted to explain why we had done it the way that we did. And this, we, we did, we also added a couple of trees out, the, out in the back, in the rear parking area, along with an island here that, um, that starts to delineate an area in this parking lot that would be used primarily for the community center parking. And this pretty much sums up what we've worked on since last month and we feel that it adequately addresses the issues that were raised at the last meeting and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Chairman, um, I noted in the ex explanatory cover letter that um, you made reference to a fence and a satellite dish. I don't recall any discussion about that in the past and I would ask you to I, show me where that's yes, going sure. to be located and yes. describe the satellite dish. Yes, there is a six-foot satellite dish that will be required for the business that will be in the existing house. And the only, the, the most feasible location that's been identified for that, because it has to have certain exposure to the sky and angle and azimuth, and um, there, there aren't that many places on the site where it wouldn't be, where it would be blocked by where it would not be blocked by trees or by buildings. So the area that's been identified for that is in the front here, in this, in this corner. Um, and we have been... Okay. 
So in the, in the elevation, this is looking at the main entrance. Um, this is that area in the plan that's kind of recessed back. And so we've been looking at having it right here and have designed a um, decorative fence that would span across the whole area, this whole area, so that it would be integrated with the facade of the building. It would be of similar uh, clabbered materials with a, a gate, with a, a peaked, um, very ornamental peaked gate that would be in harmony with the other architectural features, the gables that, that we've been designing. And um, so the idea was to create something that, you know, instead of just boxing it in with, with, a, with a very um, ordinary fence, that no matter how much we tried to screen it, you would look at it and, and say, oh, what are they hiding up there? Um, the idea was to create something that would actually be, would actually enhance the facade uh, and the, de the design of the building and be an integral part of it. And the fence will be tall enough to hide it completely from view? Yes, yes, the fence will be six feet tall. Um, it's also, there's also a grade change on the site. Um, when, you're, when you're standing down here at the main entrance, there's a grade change from here to here of, I'm get, I think, about four or five feet. So, uh, so it would definitely be hidden from view, because not only would the fence be the height of the satellite dish, but when you're, when you're down here looking up at it, you, know, you're, you, you get that angle also of vision that, that would be uh, further obscure it. Okay. Thank you. I have a couple of questions, but maybe we should have yep. a public hearing. Yep. Unless it pertains to something that she just introduced. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I think what I'll do right now is open it to a public hearing, and then after the public hearing, we'll have a further discussion of some of the items that are questioned. Mm -hmm. I'd open a public hearing now for the public to come forward if they have any comments or questions regarding the uh, proposal in front of the board tonight. Yeah, if you'd step to the podium. Uh, seeing nobody coming forward to speak, I will close the hearing and continue our discussion. Ms. Flynn, regarding the comment you made about the plantings adjacent to the walkway leading to the, to the existing building, uh, so I presume with the final site plan submitted then include, I think it's three azaleas, reference to those additional three, yes. three plants? Yes, there, there, sh there should be three azaleas on either side of that, I believe, okay. and that, so that will be sure. corrected. Uh, there's, there's an existing bituminous sidewalk along the entrance drive from Route 77 to the to the high school. Other than the cutout for the two-way entrance, would that be changed or disturbed in any way? Um, you can correct me if, if I'm not uh, accurate on this, but I, the, the intention, I believe, is to uh, leave that in its current um, state. It's, it's, not, it's in fairly good condition. It's not used very much, and we would just be um, making the cut and uh, putting putting uh, ramps, sort curb ramps, where we make the cut and, and carrying the, the new curb out to meet the existing curb. So if I'm, a, if I'm a pedestrian coming from the IGA parking lot, I could walk down the new sidewalk, Esplanade, turn right along that existing sidewalk and come all the way around and not have to walk in the street or the parking lot, other than to cross the driveway. Uh, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. That existing walk will stay there. Um, what may happen also is that people may choose to take the to cut through the community right. center site, use that walk system. But either way, they, they would be able they would have access. Okay. Thank you. Um, could you clarify for me the lighting associated with signage, if there is any? I guess 
I've seen it discussed a couple of times and I'm not sure. Is there an illuminated sign for either community services or the tenant in the existing building or anything else like that? There, uh, there is no, the, the existing, existing community services sign will be relocated to this corner here. There is no lighting associated with that. Um, the, the, there is an existing business sign outside of the main uh, house there, which I believe does have some lighting. That will be removed and that will be replaced by a, a sign that I believe you received in, mm -hmm. in your, along with the letter and the package um, that will not be lit. Okay. So what, what lighting is being added as part of this project then? There are lights along the uh, Esplanade, along Route 77, that are the um, town center, using the town center fixtures, fixtures, the more historic kinds of type of um, lights and that are used throughout the town. Mm -hmm. And then through the parking lot are more standard parking lot fixtures. And there are, also, and there are wall packs along the building so that there are adequate light levels at the entrances and along the walkways. And there are two lights out here which would be illuminating the parking area. Those are pole mounted? Out right, back. right. Oh, well, since last time, two, I believe it's two wall packs have been added along the back area um, to light up, light these mm -hmm. entrances, which were not there before. And or exits. Uh, help me understand why the, the parking lot lights are not also the town center design. Bec we, we were focusing on that area al along, the, uh, along Route 77 as the town center district. And uh, we, we saw this, uh, we were giving this a similar treatment to this parking lot here, which was set back from what we saw as the, the um, main town center area along the main road. Um. Because I, the uh, standard parking lot fixtures are also used throughout the high school site um, in, the, in, all, in the other parking areas that are located over here and adjacent to that. So we were being consistent with that. Okay, I guess um, maybe you could argue the other way and say, why don't we be consistent with the elementary and middle schools which have the town center design fixtures throughout their parking areas. Um, but opinions aside, if, if I read the ordinance right, everything that's in this part of the town is in the town center district regardless of whether it abuts the highway or is, is set back. So is there a, a significant cost difference between the, the regular industrial fixtures and the town center style fixtures? Yes, there, there is a significant cost dis, um, difference. I cannot speak in exact numbers, but um, the, one of the main reasons is that the town center fixtures are, are lower and there would be re a lot more of them required to light an area at the same level as the parking lot fixtures. Do you have any more information on the cost issues here? Steve Harding, I'm the Post Associates of Town Engineer. Um, I think what Patty's trying to, to relay is what the, um, the fixtures that are using are more lighting economical and that they're easier to control. They have the, um, the, the beam down lighting and they can uh, cover a wider surface and they'll be consistent with the area, with the light fixtures that are already at the site. There's a light fixture here, for instance, there's one up along here and there's uh, several over on this side. So um, for consistency standpoint, I think that's why the, the determination was used to go to the, the more shoebox style lighting in the parking lot area. Do you, Mr. Harding, do you have any, any inkling as to what the cost difference would be if the, the fixtures specified in the ordinance were used? It would depend on the amount of fixtures that you have and obviously what, what style you went to. Um, and the fire station and police station along Jordan Way went to a more um, elaborate fixture than what was put originally down in the uh, town center uh, walkway uh, that was done to try to get a little more uh, elevation on the poles and get a little bit better fiber optics than was originally used. Um, 
without doing a detailed study, I could I couldn't give you an exact number. I can't tell you it would be more expensive, I would guess. Somewhere in the magnitude of five to ten thousand dollars. Well, I, I certainly understand your your reasoning as a as a supporter of the, the project and a taxpayer. Money's pretty important, but as a a member of this board, I, I feel there's a certain duty to try and uphold the, the ordinance as written. And if we use the argument that we don't want to change these fixtures because what's already there is already the older, uglier style, then we'll never have a reason to, to upgrade it incrementally, uh, which is one of the things that I struggle with. So what would be the impact, um, and I have no, no assurance that the rest of this board would support it, but what would be the impact of a condition in a, any potential approval that said revise the plans to incorporate fixtures consistent with the ordinance, the town center ordinance? I think, so what you're, um, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question, that's one of my hesitation. You'd like to condition the, the approval for the lighting fixtures to all be changed to the uh, colonial style? Town center fixtures to lighting fixtures that are that meet the requirements of the ordinance for the town center district. Yes. I mean, if if, if that's what it would take to to get the approval, I think the town would would, would do that. Um, where would you draw the line, though? Um, obviously, we've got a fixture here that exists today that we wouldn't want to change. There's a another fixture up here that um, you know, is is going to remain. Where would this, are you saying that everything in this area would now become a colonial style? Because you're going to have more lighting fixtures that are a little bit more difficult to control as we found on the, on the walkways. Um, you don't get well, I guess, you know, speaking from my own personal opinion, uh, I would propose that the fixtures that are encompassed by the, the boundaries of the project would comply with the ordinance. If there's something that's on the margins, you could probably make a good argument that would be saved for another day. Is that, the, is that the support of the board? I mean, well, that, I think, that I I think the town is obviously willing to work with the plan. It's a strong desire of the board. I, I guess I have a question for Maureen uh, in terms of the premise that all of the fixtures would have to be changed under the town ordinance. I thought we talked about that last time, and that wasn't the case, that the ordinance did not apply to as much of the area as perhaps some may think. Um, I believe you're talking about the traffic islands in the parking lot. No, the lighting. And the... I think at the left, I don't mean, we could have had a discussion about lighting and I just don't remember, but I think... Well, that, but the, yeah, the issue about the traffic islands is the same issue, isn't right, it? Right, and I, I think the, the decision where, well, the, the direction the board appeared to be moving at the last meeting was that you felt that uh, you did not need to apply the town center standards when you were reconfiguring an existing parking lot. And that can apply as well to... If the board chooses to do that, yes. ...figuring an existing lighting in an existing park. If you make that decision, however, you are setting a precedent for future parking lots that come in. And I'm not saying that that isn't a good precedent or a bad precedent. I'm just pointing that out. If I could just add to, excuse me, <laughs> jump right in. Um, the, the fire in the police station, uh, we did do, Jordan, uh, we did the, do the, uh, the Route 77 and a part of Jordan Way going down through the uh, town. But we didn't like the we didn't use the, the town center fixtures for the parking lots in the police station or behind the fire station. So I don't know if that plays into the decision at all as, as far as precedents go. Maureen, could you just read that part of the ordinance to us if you there is no specific standard for lighting in the town center that says you must use X fixture. There are more broad standards that talk about creating a pedestrian inviting area, about being careful about walkways and, and in that context looking at lighting and furniture and landscaping. It has been the practice of the board since the new sidewalks were constructed to try to make sure that the same lighting that was used adjacent to the sidewalks be continued along major areas in the town center. 
and I believe that those lights were taken down some distance down Jordan Way. And please correct me, Steve, if I'm wrong. I don't think they were used in the parking lot, but they, they were taken down Jordan Way some distance. They were taken down Jordan Way. There's, right. there's one at the rear entrance on the police station after you go past the police station, and I think there's one down by the, the gate that connects to the, um, the cul-de-sac behind the so, so the concept was where you would expect pedestrians to be walking, you would continue to use those types of lights. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah it does. And, and I guess I'll say that I'm not worried about, given the nature of the ordinance, how general it is, uh, you know, we're not the Supreme Judicial Court here, so we, we're not setting any precedent that we couldn't, in another project, say we would like these sorts of lights in this particular area. So I, I don't really think that's a, that's a concern. I was going to say that, and Steve did say it, that on other projects where there was a walkway uh, on 77, like the police station, we were concerned about consistent lighting in those areas, but I don't remember that we required the same type of lighting in the back areas where there are parking lots. And I think that's I think that approach is certainly consistent with the ordinance. Um, so I guess that's a long way of saying I don't think that we're violating our ordinance or deviating any in any way, shape, or form from our ordinance by requiring the town center lighting on the front sidewalk part, but not in the in the back parking lot. If I could just add an additional comment to that, since you and I apparently have somewhat different views on this, but. Uh, in my view, the, the school complex in Cape Elizabeth is the most visible and highly trafficked area in the entire town. And I think we did the right thing by putting fixtures in the driveway leading up to Pond Cove and, and the middle school that were very much consistent and in similar in appearance to what's out on Scott Dyer Road. Uh, and to not do that here, I think we start to have a patchwork of, of the way things look and possibly uh, open the door for other applicants with non-municipal projects to say, why should I do it for my system, for my my project? Because you didn't require it at the town. But that's that's some, a matter of opinion. It's, it's certainly not so clearly defined in the ordinance that we have we have no latitude. In it. And I did have a question on another subject. Maybe we're done with this one. My favorite parking lot. Explain to me about the island and how its placement was chosen. Well, we, if, if you'll recall from the parking analysis that I outlined last time, uh, there we're accommodating, I believe it was 42 spaces and then another 21 in the rear to fulfill the 63 space requirement for the community center. So we counted out roughly 21 spaces, how much area that would take here, and we placed the island there to, as a way to demarcate different zones in the parking lot, um, anticipating that at some point uh, those spaces might, might, want to, might need to be dedicated or signage put to indicate that they were for the community center. Now, this one, I think, is a little less interpretive, though. Does not the ordinance say you should have an island for every 10 spaces? Yes. Um, can you respond to that? Oh, and uh, the ordinance says that there is an, an island required for every 10 spaces. Well, actually, I, I could respond to that. I'm sorry. Um, we, the, we're, we're looking at the, um, the whole parking lot as an existing condition, which we are uh, making some minor changes in terms of restriping, which um, then, which helps the parking situation for the community center, also gives the school extra parking. Um, but we, we have actually, there's one island that we've added in the middle, but we actually have carved out spaces, some more green, quite a bit more green space at this end of the parking lot, um, where this tree is shown, that was formerly asphalt that we're carving out here as well, and this corner of the parking lot. We have also, uh, increased this green space along the building. Um, this this distance from the building to the parking has been expanded about 25 feet. 
Um, part of the reasoning, part of the reason for that was to um, give adequate distance from the air intakes to the building, um, uh, to from there to the area where the cars might be parking and idling. Um, but we looked at it as, as that that we have added a, quite a bit of green space here and plantings. So we have addressed the area that's immediately adjacent to the community center, uh, which will which is being altered for the service of the community center. So your reasoning is that with the addition of that extra green space near the building, it's it's okay to to waive or modify the requirement on islands in the parking lot itself. Well, that's that's how we're hoping you look at it. Okay, <laughs> um, that's because what I understand. because we're looking at this as an existing condition, which it, it is al already um, uh, just parking and bus parking, and we're all we're we'll be restriping that already to the benefit of the school in acquiring an extra 37 or so parking spaces. And due to the the budget constraints of this project, we've been trying to uh, keep the changes beyond that in the realm, immediate realm of the community center. Well, I, I applaud your efforts there. Again, as a, as a member of the community, I think this is great. It needs to be done cheaply. I just want to make sure that whatever input I have to this board, that it, we also observe the spirit and letter of the, of the rules that we all have, have signed up to live by. Thank you. Just to be, I think there was some disagreement, not disagreement, but difference of opinion about the, the parking lot and the island. And I personally, I like the green that you've added around the building. I think that will be very attractive. But in terms of putting an island in, it doesn't really meet the standards. <clears throat> or viewing it as an existing condition, I think if we're going to view it as an existing condition, perhaps we should just leave it alone and not add any more if we're going to add an island that doesn't really meet the standards, perhaps we shouldn't add an island at all. Well, what about move it 10 spaces towards the building and then it meets the standards? Oh, you'd have to move it up further from the building. No, I think it's the other way. There are only six spaces before it, so you'd have to move Is it two back. Ten spaces in total or 10 spaces? So even if there's three rows of parking, it would be 30 spaces then until the, the first island. No, it's just that it's, there's, I think, 13 spaces and then an island and then another seven or eight spaces. And you would be to put an island every 10 spaces. Right, so, so if we were going to have one, you'd have could to push the island further away from the building to make it 10 and 10. Mm -hmm. that's in the middle of the parking lot. Right. Right. The, the, island, the island we're proposing right now, if you were to move it so that it was more in conformance with the ordinance, you'd have to move that island further away from the community center building so that it would be dividing up 10 spaces on either side of it. Um, 10 spaces total or 10? Uh... So that you wouldn't, in that, that particular double row of parking, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have more than 10 spaces mm -hmm. without a break. Okay. Five on each side. 10 on each side. Ten um, that, you have to move the away. Yeah, we, we'd be happy to do that, if you'd like. I defer to your superior wisdom on that one. Any other question? I'm not sure if you were making a proposal or just... I'm, I'm just saying that I'd certainly consider taking it out altogether. Either either we meet the standard or we meet the standard that if it's left alone, if we're viewing it as an existing lot, we leave it as an existing lot. And what would be the impact, whichever way it moves, of relocating the island so that it, it was there and it complied with the standard? Is that it? question to me? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. What would be the impact? Could you repeat that, please? Well, as I understand it, there's an island shown on the plan, which is great. It does, it begins to break up the parking lot, at least in one section. But it's located in a place where it doesn't meet the standard. So wherever it has to move to meet the standard, three spaces this way or that way, 
what's the impact of doing that? So then there's an island and it actually meets the standard. So in the future, when we come back and do more things to that lot, we don't have to move it again, we just add more. Oh, yeah, I, um, I don't see that it would be a big impact one way or another, uh, wherever it is. Um, as I said, the, reason, the reasoning for putting it here was to demarcate um, an area of parking that would be specifically for the community center use, which we found, uh, we found to be a very expedient way of, of uh, separating two areas of parking, but I, I think that it would be no problem, it wouldn't be a big issue to move it several spaces this way to comply with the ordinance. And actually, if I can add something to that, um, this is probably a stretch of about 20 or so spaces, it m maybe, maybe less. I, I'm not showing the whole parking lot on here. Um, and at a, at a future point, if some, if some more islands were added in the parking lot, um, the, the next island would obviously be at the end of the row. So what I, what I might suggest would be to place it in the middle, um, so that there might there might be nine nine spaces here, nine spaces here, but something like that, so that it was evenly spaced. I just want to go back to the ordinance again, Maureen. It's one for every twenty. Ten. One for every ten, ten. spaces. Place an island. Ten spaces. It's actually five because there's two on each side. Is that no, correct? No, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a linear row of spaces that are perpendicularly parallel to each other. Okay. So you can whether it's a double loaded row or a single row, it's it's that the eleven space has to be planted. So moving it to the middle would meet the standard. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, this lot, if it were built today, would require three islands, I believe. And we're adding one now, potentially. What, yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting at. It, putting the one island doesn't meet the standard anyway. So if we're moving it to meet the standard, I guess I don't see the point. Um, if we really have to meet the standard, which I don't think we do, we need three islands, right, in the parking lot. And we talked about that last time, and I, for one, don't think, because it's being reconfigured, that the standard applies. And secondly, given the cost factor, I think the town would rather not do it, and I, I agree with them. So I guess all I'm getting at is to move it a few spaces to the middle, because we want it to meet the standard, still won't, won't do it. So the question in my mind becomes, is it better where it is because it delineates parking for the community center as opposed to other parking, or is it better to move it for some other reason because it, it may look better or may be in the middle of the road? Or do we regard it as an existing condition and remove it altogether? Well, we can regard it as an existing condition and still allow one island. I mean, that is not mutually exclusive. But, I, I saw this as a good faith gesture on the part of the, the applicant to do something to begin to bring the parking lot into compliance, realizing that you know they probably didn't have the financial resources to do it all, uh, which is great. It's better than not doing anything. I would just as soon see it moved so that it'll be in the right place when the whole parking lot is done the way it should be, and then just add others later as the opportunity presents. As far as delineating the parking between community services and other things, I'm not sure one island really does that anyway. People are going to park wherever there's an open spot, and if the 27 spaces close to the building are full, they'll just go to the back half. People will park wherever they can in that area, as we see every time there's, there's two major events going on at the same time. Well, thank you. Thanks. I have a couple of questions. If I could ask them, would you, could you just briefly go over that esplanade again and the plantings uh, so we get a better picture of what you're planning to do? Yes, we, uh, 
the sidewalk is set back five feet from the road so there is a grassy strip there and we ha are adding five trees in that strip and then on the other side of the sidewalk there is more green space we have added um, a num a shrub uh, buffer between the parking lot and to screen the parking lot from the road and from the sidewalk and delineate that pedestrian corridor we have also added a walk connector from the sidewalk, uh, the concrete sidewalk along the esplanade to connect to the front entrance of the house. And on either side of that, we um, have designated uh, shrub plantings, azaleas to be planted on either side of that. And there are two existing trees there as well. Um, it's your intention to bring that sidewalk to a close at the lot line, is that? Right. Okay. Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Charles regarding the lighting. I certainly would like to see the continuation of that style fixture if I could. If it would be possible, I'm not sure how, how it could be done. But I, I did count up the number of fixtures. And it, and it looks to me like if we were to keep the same wattage, we would probably add six fixtures. I don't know whether we could train an island in the uh, parking lot for some fixtures, but <laughs> uh, I, I think if the high school is going to be renovated in the future and a new site plan review on some of those things, I think the fixtures are going to change. And I think when you go up to the middle school and look at how nice it looks with the town center fixtures there. It, it, it does make a, it does bring it together. I understand the situation of the finances, but I'm wondering if there's some way that we couldn't, couldn't at, light, at least light the parking lot along the entryway to the high school with the, with the typical fixture mm -hmm. as we see, and then the two in the rear. Mm -hmm. um, my calculations to try to keep the wattage in, in just quick calculations show that it's about six fixtures, six additional yeah, fixtures. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds and, likely. Uh, I'm not sure how we could do that still um, get this approved tonight, but if there was a way around that, but, um, that we could possibly... Uh, Michael McGovern speaking on behalf of the applicant. You know, we, we would welcome uh, any change the board feels appropriate that is inexpensive in cost that results in the approval occurring this evening. If the approval does not occur this evening, uh, we'll really be behind in trying to get the project done. Also, we are at the step now that we've actually accepted bids for the project, and I think it'll be interesting at the very least to know when you do make changes we'll be able to clearly identify uh, what the cost is, either in terms of savings or in terms of additional expense. Uh, I don't know how the rest, <coughs> the rest of the board feels about this, but I feel strongly that if we could have some consistency, uh, but I don't want to hold the project up to do that this evening. There's a way around it. I'll weigh in with my opinion. I'd be happy to support your idea of swapping the lighting fixtures to bring them into conformance with the island. Um, while I was a proponent of dressing up um, the parking lot and making it um, more attractive by adding islands, it's clear that one isn't going to meet the ordinance still. And it really plunked down in the middle there. It doesn't look like part of a landscaping plan, and it looks like rather an afterthought to me. So, you know, if we can't bring it fully into compliance, the money isn't there in the budget. Um, you know, if we can at least do the lighting, I'd support that. Mr. Griffin. Mr. Carter. In regards to lighting, I'd like to see the community center plan be somewhat consistent with what the town was able to do in Jordan Way with the fire station and police station. Uh, I support the idea of islands within the parking lot up above, but as the board members uh, are aware, we had a plan presented to us in workshop that uh, the building of another parking lot, perhaps in this area, for use by the high school. And perhaps at that time we could ask that the issue of planters be considered or islands in this parking lot at the same time. But, uh, 
I would like to see the entrance to the high school along with the, again, as Mr. Griffin pointed out, renovations being made to the high school and uh, hope for changes on Route 77 as far as entering the high school main driveway. I'd like to see the community center at this time make plans to have lighting consistent with the rest of the town center zone. Mr. McGovern, just a question here. Would it, would it be possible uh, if the bids go out to um, get an added <coughs> addendum, <coughs> excuse me, an addendum in that would give an ad for that and then possibly come back to us in the future for just a... The, the bids are already out and have been accepted. They haven't been awarded yet. Okay. So it'd be a matter of uh, speaking with the successful subcontractor uh, for this work who has this aspect of working their contract and and uh, negotiating a uh, price for any change. Okay. So that can be done. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Well, if if we're going to uh, require that change, how do we? How do you want to define it so that it's specific enough so that they can? follow and know exactly what they need in terms of additional planning. My thought might be, and then uh, Maureen might correct me on this, but we could put a note in, in, in our motion that would ask them to return to us uh, to review that um, after they've got the pricing. But what, what area specifically do you want the changes in the lighting? My, my concern would be a parallel to the entrance to the high school, continuing it as, as they do along the uh, esplanade in the front of the building and the two lights in the rear that face the parking lot. Uh, Ms. Flynn, are, are there any pole mounted lights in this project currently, or is One. everything going to be new? Uh, there is an existing light fixture here, okay. full mounted. Um, in this lot, there is one existing fixture here, and I believe there's another one at the other end. Yeah, but nothing in the main. Mm, I no, there is not. Everything else is new. Okay, thank you. So maybe a condition in a motion could be something like uh, the plan be revised such that all new lighting fixtures installed. Uh, with this project be substantially similar in appearance to existing town center district fixtures. And that way I don't know that they necessarily need to come back because that's a little awkward. That way the, the code enforcement officer can make sure uh, when the building permits are done. Am I on track, Maureen? Actually, the, my suggestion was that um, you're, normally the board has to be very careful about delegating authority to staff. But because the ordinance has a very specific standard about no more than 0.5 foot candles at the property line, and you're designating a specific lighting fixture that there's already a picture of in the, in the application packet. I think we could uh, delegate it to town staff, specifically the town engineer and myself, to um, make sure that the lighting that's proposed is the light fixture you want in the areas you want in a light level that we find acceptable. Do you think that would work? That would be fine with me. Mr. Chairman, we'd also have to designate that that one existing be changed where it's going to look. I think Well, because it's it's adjacent to the new, as well as all the new lighting fixtures. But, but, but that probably, in my opinion, that uh, more matches what's existing at the high school right now, and to okay. cause them the extra uh, cost uh, to change that at this time, uh, okay. I'm sure it will be probably changed at the time you renovate the high school. Mr. McGovern. I, again, we would prefer that the board approve what the board wishes to approve, that we not have to come back to the planning board. However, if we do find we have a cost issue, we then come back to the planning board. I think it's always difficult in a municipal project when you delegate something to the planner because the planner is technically a subordinate of the town manager. I hate to use that term, but it's a very awkward relationship when I'm looking for something and the planner saying no, 
in terms of an approval. So I'd prefer, you know, in these instances that you approve what you'd like, and then if we have an issue with it, we would come back to the board. Thank you. Okay. I would think that the way you wrote that would probably be acceptable. I think your wording stated that uh, it would be acceptable to me anyways, that you, the way you stated it, that they would comply with the town set of fixtures. Is that the way you had it? Uh, that new lighting fixtures would substantiate would be substantially similar in appearance with existing town center district fixtures. Is that tight enough to? <clears throat> I would uh, think that would give you a spirit across without yeah. putting yeah. town staff in an awkward position. Okay. okay. Are we uh, ready to? Uh, well, what, what do we want to do about the island? I would, <clears throat> I would like to recommend that we eliminate the island at this time, that we have it taken out of the plans. So we could make that a condition of this uh, motion? Okay. That we leave the parking lot, except for the plantings that are adjacent to the building, yep. the parking lot and the Like to make a motion? Sure. I'll, I'll also state for the record that uh, well, I think this is a great compromise. I hope we get an opportunity to come back in the not too distant future and do something about that parking lot to make it look nice. And I have no doubt the town staff would like to do that too when the money's there. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, make a motion. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. One, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan approval to convert the building at 343 Ocean House Road to a community center, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Two, the plan substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan approval convert the building at 343 Ocean House Road to a community center be approved with the following conditions. One, that the site plan be updated to show three additional azalea plants adjacent to the walkway from Route 77 to the existing building. Two, that the new parking island and tree shown on the plans be removed. And three, that the plan be revised such that all new lighting fixtures installed with this project be substantially similar in appearance to existing town center district fixtures. Motion been made. Uh, do I have a second? Mr. Griffin, I'd like to second, please. Motion's been made and second. Is there uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, I'll raise the motion to the vote. All those in favor of the motion in front of the board, please raise the right hand. All those opposed, the motion carries. Project's on the way. Good luck. The final item on our agenda this evening is uh, Dimitros Mijos is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Romeo's site plan located in the Pond Cove Shopping Center to re relocate the propane tanks. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations.
Mr. Mijos. Yes, uh, hi, my name is Dimitrios Mijos. I'm the owner of Romeo's Pizza. Um, I have a, I run into a little problem here on site that I'd like to come back to you and see if I can help me out. Um, originally, when I was looking at the site, I had contacted River Company, which is the company I deal with for all my stores, to show me a location where we can install the 1,000 gallon gas tank in order to run my equipment. At the time, they showed me a place which was the original, uh, the way it was approved, and that space is right behind the restaurant, which is right here. Um, and what that would require is to remove the deck. And that was part of the plan that I had agreed with the owner of the plaza to do that. Um, consequently, what I think, I don't know if it was my mistake or an oversight, what happened was, I guess, because what I'm planning to do is rent an additional space in the back uh, to operate. On my original plan, it shows that I'm going to have an additional cooler there. The problem I'm running into is Dead River Company, when I asked them to come and install the gas tank for me, they basically said to me, we cannot do that, it will be, they can do it. The problem is, it will be legal today, but once the other cooler is being installed, technically it will be illegal. And the reason being is, I guess the code reads that it has to be 10 feet away from the structure. And once you add up a cooler to the building, I guess the cooler becomes part of the structure. Therefore, we don't have the 10 feet because it's a pretty tight area back there. So that creates a scenario where I can start today with a gas tank on the approved location. But six months, eight, eight months down the road, when I'm planning to rent the additional space and I add up the cooler, at that point of time, that will become illegal. So I don't live in a scenario where something's right today and something's wrong tomorrow. And my thought was, talking with Dead River Company, was to find an alternative place for that. And um, they came back with an alternative place to installing the gas tank propane, and that is basically on the other side, which is right here. My original was on this side, now it will be on this side, of, on the other side of the building, on the side side of the building where CDS is. And uh, that's what I'm asking to do. Mr. Serrano. Uh, what sort of line would run from the tank to your building and where would that go? Okay, that will be an iron pipe that will run behind the building right all along behind the building and then we'll, we'll take a, a left and to feed my, the space. So it will be a gas line that will go right behind the building basically. You have little circles on this, it said something about fencing, I think, or something. What, is, what do these circles in this drawing re represent? Those are barriers. Um, they call yes. concrete posts. So those are, that's concrete posts. You can have other barriers or jerseys. Basically, that's what it is. It's for protection in case somebody drives, doesn't run into the gas tank. I understand that, but the end of it is left open. Oh, we'll make sure it's covered all around. That, that's not the precise. That was just a sketch will be done according to whatever the, the, so the law So there will be are. concrete barriers around, the in, so no car could... Correct. And, and whatever the law requires to do it will make it the way it is. Okay. Correct. I don't believe there's vehicular access back there anyway. Yeah. Excuse me, that there is access back there, but um, when we did this two months ago and we looked at the parking, uh, if they discontinued all of the parking back there, they still have enough parking on site to meet all the parking needs for the shopping center. So if there's a, if, and it, I was out there last week, there's not a lot of people that park out there. I don't know if you guys 
Go ahead. If you look at the, the blue line plan, the new location is indicated there. I missed it. The, the old one is still there. That's what, why it's confusing. I couldn't figure out where it was until it was just pointed yeah, out. It next, looked like it was in a building. It's, it's next to the, the last area. parking place. Yes. No, I see it. Now. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know about anybody else. I'd, I'd certainly have no objections. I'd just ask that uh, the final plan needs to be corrected just so that it's clear. I understand future. what you mean. Yes. I think the only concern for me is that there be sufficient barriers around it. I think it's actually quite a good location. So, uh, my, my, what I'm planning to do is have Dead River Company install it, and whatever the requirements are, local, state, whatever, we're, um, we're going to do that, whatever the requirements are. I don't know precisely what the requirements are, but whatever they are, we'll meet them. I have to agree with Mr. Charles that when you do the final plan that to take the other tank off it. Um, I don't really, in my mind, I don't see a need for me to go out on the site. Uh, I think Maureen saw the site earlier. Um, <clears throat> does anybody else have any further thoughts about that? See no need for a sidewalk to go out to the site. But, uh, the installation of gas tanks and gas appliances have to be done by licensed people, of which Dead River is one. I have no concerns about the detail on the plan except for removing the original site. Okay. Ready for a motion? I am. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. One, Dimitrios Mijos is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Romeo site plan located in the Pond Cove Shopping Center to relocate the propane tanks, which requires review under section 19-9-6. Two, the amendment substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dimitrios Mijos for site plan approval of an amendment to the previously approved Romeo site plan located in the Pond Cove Shopping Center to relocate the propane tanks be approved with the following condition, that the, that the final plans be amended to eliminate references to the original proposed location of said gas tank. Motion's been made. Do I hear a second? Motion's made and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will present the motion to a vote. All those in favor, show by raising their right hand. All those opposed, the motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Is there any other new business in front of the uh, board? Motion. Chairman, I have a motion that we adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? The uh, 19th of March meeting is brought to a close. Oh.